Hi there. Haven't published uh, anything for a while, so uh, what I thought I'd do is just uh, do a quick video. Um, what I'm uh, in the process of doing is uh, reorganizing the, the lab around here and then uh, getting a, a bunch of stuff automated uh, so I can do some uh, uh, basic automated testing. And one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to get uh, a core set of tools that I bought uh, specifically calibrated so that I can guarantee accuracy and then I can use that to go and calibrate the other parts of my my lab here and so I'll be able to build on top of uh, the set of things that I'm actually paying to have calibrated by Keysight um, and then use that to calibrate other items that I have that can then go out and calibrate the rest of them like my uh, signal generators and frequency counters and power meters and so on so this is the first piece of git that I've gotten back from Keysight uh, what I sent them was I sent them my 3458A digital multimeter and my 8902A um, measuring receiver and I sent them the 11, uh, 722 sensor so they finished uh, calibrating that so let's open it up and have a look and see what we get inside so you know I'm just gonna go in and open the, the plastic little envelope that we have here see what's on the, the shipping thing I've got to say the Keysight guys have done a, a fantastic job Keysight calibration you simply cannot beat them uh, in terms of customer service and excellence I had several questions while I was um, uh, going you know looking at what I was going to calibrate and how I was going to calibrate it and you know I was able to call them up and I, I actually got the guys that run the individual labs out of Loveland, uh, Colorado and Roseville, California to give me a call back to explain to me how uh, their calibration stuff worked. So that was, uh, that was just fantastic. Um, and uh, my stuff's still there right now being uh, calibrated. So this is more or less a little unboxing. And I guess if we pull that open, Let's see, oh, the calibration documents. Let's uh, put the box aside and we'll have a look at the calibration documents quickly. So what we have here is, uh, this is, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. You know, this is an official uh, calibration Keysight calibration document. Now the reason that I wanted to send this off was not basically just so that I could get a certificate calibration. The problem that I had was that um, I didn't have the oops, I didn't have these on the back of uh, my 11722. So these are the calibration factors that for the various frequencies what uh, you're going to set as the calibration factor for the sensor. So I wanted to be able to get those regenerated so now I know exactly what the calibration factor is and I can use that in uh, uh, the, the setting up and testing of my other uh, components. So they've certainly done a, a great job of, of putting this together. So let's pull that out, set uh, that aside. And I guess I need my little knife again. And they've sent it back to me, so let's take a look at what uh, the sensor looks like. So here we go. This is now the, the sensor, and we can see that it has, if I hold that just right and zoom that in, you should be able to see the. Oh, are we going to. Get, let me zoom that out just a little bit right. and there we go we've got uh, an official proper you know cal due date uh, they've actually done me a, a solid and uh, give me the proper little uh, covers for the items and on the back of it here you can see the table that I was referring to so this is typically uh, what you see on one of these uh, 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 you know sensors is you'll see a little frequency table now if we have a look at uh, compare that to a little uh, let me move that into shot there 
you know you can see that um, this is a, an 84 82a and so it has that similar set of frequencies and then uh, reference calibrations up and down the uh, uh, the item. Now, in the case of the 11722A, uh, the, the frequency sets that you put into the measurement receiver are these specific values here. And so you can see the new values that they have running up and down here. And you can see that they, I have a, a newly set uh, reference value. But uh, for some reason, what happens when you tend to buy both of these types of uh, devices secondhand, uh, you tend to see what, uh, what goes on is that they've ripped off the um, that calibration information and so I was asking why this was the case and, and no one really seems to know exactly why people do it the prevailing theory though is that uh, by taking off the calibration data here they can claim that it works and because you now don't know you know so at 10 megahertz I know exactly what uh, my calibration factor is if we had a look here you know if we brought this up and uh, and so, well, actually let's just zoom in a little bit more you know if you look here get my light out of the road uh, if you look here at 10 megahertz you know we know exactly what my, uh, uh, my calibration factor is so given that I know that this should be accurate I know that my measuring receiver is accurate when I plug this into uh, a power meter if I had a known set of uh, equipment I'd be able to go oh yes okay this is actually reading correctly but because some of the less scrupulous vendors will remove this I can't absolutely guarantee and say that somebody hasn't overdriven the sensor to the point where it's no longer uh, following any of the calibrations or it's no longer linear or it doesn't work properly or so on so that's uh, that's it and you can see that uh, you know we have a nice little key sight uh, labels on it now that are locking it together and so that's uh, uh, pretty good and I'm going to be able to use that to, to get everything uh, back into into line now I may not calibrate this every year because these sensors once they sort of you know warm in don't really vary very much over the years and so uh, it may not make a lot of sense for me to go out and, and send it out again uh, but I may in a couple of years because the price is very very uh, good on this it was only about uh, 200 and something dollars to go do it I might send it out again in a couple of years time and get it redone and just see what comes back and no, it's just way that way I can build up a little bit of an idea of the drift of the instrument, and I can start working out how soon or, or far I should uh, calibrate these uh, these devices. Anyway, I hope you found a little unboxing of the calibration standards uh, interesting, and uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.